Hey guys, so I thought this uh, week I will try something a little bit different and just have a little playtime with my distress inks just like um, the way that I played around with them already um, in my journal and then in some uh, loose uh, papers. So. I'm gathering my supplies and I want to show you what I picked up. I'm going to use this uh, set of dilution stamps and the reason why I'm going to use it is first of all because it was handy and second of all because this stamp has a lot of surface and I really want to, you know, get the benefit of using these inks. So um, I'm going to use that, mostly this one, I think. Um, I grabbed a couple of stencils, don't get, you know, a hundred stencils, grab a, a few, like two or three, and maybe one that is a bit more special, like this flower, and then some that are just a little bit more uh, generic that, you know, are good for backgrounds and that sort of thing. So I have these guys here. Um, this is a Dina Wakely stencil, and this one is a Dilutions stencil, and this one is Heidi Swap, I'm pretty sure. So, as for paper, I have my um, little A5 um, Tomoa River paper insert that, as you can see, is... Wow! I have never filled up a journal so fast. I mean, obviously, it's just mostly backgrounds. Um, I have done just a little bit of uh, journaling. I kind of like not journaling over the entire page because it's, <laughs> you know, so pretty. And I've also been doing a lot of drawing, so really experimental, just I really like how this one turned out. So cute! Um, just playing around a lot with my pen, really enjoying this. If you're a little bit scared of your sketchbook, um, if you have like, I don't know, maybe a fancier, larger sketchbook, then I recommend getting uh, one of these types of inserts. I find the A5 size really, really nice um, because it's somehow a lot less threatening. And I mean, I seriously never filled up a journal so fast and it kind of makes me want to go back in and play um, because it's just, you know, messy backgrounds that were so fast to make. So. I will be adding a little bit here. Uh, I also have a new insert. So this one has um, some paper here that I added uh, and this is how it looked like before I started messing with it. <laughs> I also have some loose um, Tomoe River papers. So it's just a lot of fun to play around with this paper. And I also have some sticker paper, so I just got a huge uh, pack of these from Amazon. So this is sticker paper, it's pretty thin. Um, I don't know how it will handle the ink, but you know, then it's, it's really easy. You can cut shapes and stick it wherever in your art journal. I'm also going to try this marker paper from Canson. Um, because I think it will respond kind of similarly to the um, Tomorrow River and this one is uh, even whiter so I think I'll just try a few and see. I have my surface here and obviously you can grab um, you know any type of paper, tags, pattern paper, watercolor paper whatever you want and uh, of course the stars of the show are my distress oxides um, I'll probably use like maybe I'll add a few colors that I like and don't have in the distress so I'm not going to go too crazy with the number of colors um, you'll see I'm just going to uh, play around with these and yeah, I'll switch you to fast forward to time lapse and we can get 
So I hope you'll enjoy this, um, I guess, slightly different video. And it's different for me because usually I really like uh, in my videos to kind of show a project from start to finish. And here, um, well, it's, it's not really, it's just uh, a lot of play time. But um, yeah, that's what I've been doing with these inks mostly lately. So I thought I would just, you know, go with the flow of what I'm doing and not necessarily create um, a special uh, project. But um, yeah, we'll see how, where the wind takes me with the next um, installments of this series. So leave me a comment and tell me, you know, what you prefer. If this is the type of thing that you prefer, just, you know, it's mostly seeing the technique and playtime, or if you prefer the, um, you know, full process from start to a finished uh, project. I'm really curious to know what you think about that. So you see me playing and, um, I found that actually the the part of this playtime that I like the most is using my stencils. You know, I put the ink on my um, kind of craft mat. This is any non-porous mat that you have. Rangers have Ranger has their craft mat. Um, you can use something like the jelly plate if you have that. I'm using a Heidi Swap one that you can see as well <laughs> used. So I found that the um, the look that I like the best is the one where first I put my inks on the surface like this, then I activate them to get that oxide effect. And then the dipping the stencil and using it kind of as a stamp, that's my favorite look because you get the shape of the stencil and you get all those um, color transitions that are just beautiful. And the thing, this works best when you have stencils, which are, you know, that the, um, uh, I don't know how to describe it, but the actual stencil that it's not mostly holes. So that the stencil itself has some surface, um, you know, usually between the shapes that um, that are cut into the stencil because that's the part that, you know, act, acts like a stamp. I hope that makes sense. So just look at your st uh, stencils and just pick the ones that have, you know, a lot of stencil material on them and a lot of surface that you can use like a stamp when you dip them into the ink and then uh, press them onto paper. So if you're going to do something uh, similar, then I really, really uh, recommend just having a little bit space around you to put wet papers to dry and working on multiple papers or journals um, or surfaces at the same time, because that can keep your work flow uh, going. And you know, you don't have to wait for things to dry. You work on one paper, you s put it aside, it dries in the meantime, you're working on five other papers. So that's what I'm doing. I have my sticker paper, I have my marker paper, I have my Tamora River paper, I have a couple of journals and I'm working on everything at the same time. And mostly by the time I get back to uh, a piece of paper, it had time to dry. And this of course is a lot easier if you're working with loose papers. And of course it gets a little bit more annoying when you're, when you want to work in a journal and you want to make, I don't know, like 10 backgrounds in the same journal at the same uh, sitting. Um, because, you know, you either have to dry here. I just put the inks straight on the stencil. Um, just saying, and it worked really well as you'll see. So, um, you know, if you want to create multiple backgrounds, in one journal on one sitting, then you either have to dry um, each paper or you have to kind of risk the um, risk it that the wet ink will kind of move around and transfer to the opposite page if you know you're closing the page or flipping the page to work on the next one. So that's uh, that can be a little bit 
Um, you know, for me, it's just like a little bit annoying because it kind of stops your workflow. So that's why I try to have a few things around me. And the problem is with that, that I'm not sure how to use those loose papers. I mean, I know I can use them for collage, but I don't do a lot of collage. So I really prefer working in a journal. But um, yeah, but this is also really fun to work with all these papers around me. So yeah, definitely the Tamora River is my favorite, um, just because it gets so gorgeously crinkly and it can handle a lot of water and it doesn't um, bleed through the paper, which is amazing. If you use something like copy paper, you know, paper from your printer, you can use it, but it will, if you use just a little bit more water, then everything will just sip through the paper and... Um, yeah, and you can use kind of one side and it gets very fragile when you wet it. So the Tamora River paper is amazing. Now here I'm um, I'm just, uh, I guess, distressing or playing a bit also with the cover of my A5 insert. And I will link you to where I got this insert. I think uh, it's an Etsy store. I think they're in Taiwan. But um, in the meantime, I already ordered a couple more of these inserts just because I enjoy them so much. I've never gone through an insert or a journal so fast. Um, so I ordered a couple more. They arrived again super fast, really well packed. Um, so if you're interested in trying the Tamora River paper or the A5 size or these types of inserts, then I highly recommend um, trying out uh, that seller that I used because in my two orders I was uh, from there I was very happy. So I decided to try a little bit this um, big flower stencil trying to dip it into the paint and you see the problem with it because um, the lines are kind of thin you kind of the impressions are not uh, perfect with it. Um, these types of stencils, in my opinion, like that flower one, work really well with um, like spray mists or inks. And with the this type of application, um, you know, if the inks like I'm doing now with the surface, it's just it's it's not ideal to get the most out of it. But I just played around with it. I'm more working on kind of background texture and color and less on getting really um, clear, perfect impressions. So, yeah, I also have a piece of like a cotton cloth handy. Um, I try to minimize the use of, um, you know, things like paper towels and baby wipes um, just, you know, for the environment and the cloth, um, that cotton cloth that I use is fantastic. It just absorbs all the extra liquid perfectly. You can wash it um, or not. <laughs> Mine is getting very <laughs> colorful. <laughs> and yeah, I, I just try to be more uh, aware of the amount of trash that I manufacture. <laughs> So here I grabbed this little, this is watercolor paper from Prima. Prima has all kinds of really adorable um, watercolor paper pads in a variety of sizes. And the paper is really nice. So here I really got it kind of wet and I just, I played around with it. Um, I really wanted here to work a little bit more about layering um, color and seeing how that works with the oxides because I know it's one of the things that everyone is raving about and I haven't had like the best uh, experience with uh, layering them on top of each other so I thought I would try and I thought I would use uh, watercolor paper just because it you know it doesn't get crinkly like the Tamora River and um, it's just a different look, but it also handles a lot of water really well. And this paper is really nice. When it gets very wet, it's almost like canvas. Um, and I really, I enjoy working with it. I sometimes paint on it. I should be using it more. But I think also for these type of um, 
techniques, it's it's great to try. I will hopefully remember to link you to the Prima pads. You know, Ranger also has watercolor paper, but I think it only comes in, um, you know, like card size and then maybe eight and a half by 11 size. So Prima has a really wide selection of sizes, um, also square pads, a 12 by 12 size. If you're a scrapbooker, you would love that and just different sizes. So check that out if you're interested in, you know, maybe playing with some watercolor paper in a less intimidating uh, size, like one of those large uh, artist pads. So yeah, just showing you all the lovely colors that I got there. And I was thinking of wrapping it up, but uh, then I discovered that I had a few uh, papers um, with, you know, just empty space on one side, so I couldn't let that happen. And um, you also see that I use only two or three colors at a time. And I recommend that you try that too, just, you know, to keep all the muddiness under control, but also try uh, interesting combinations because it might surprise you, um, you know, what you can come up with and maybe you like it. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you feel inspired to try something similar. Bye.